Good morning. It's Thursday. I now have Sadie for one full week. But um, what I'm going to do now, I guess you can call this counter conditioning 101. So what I'm already doing with Sadie, I know she's not reactive when other dogs go by, but just for demonstration purposes, this is what I'm going to show you. Sadie, come. Good. Good. Hey, Sadie Bob. Good girl. Let's go. And we'll add a Sadie. Take a break. She's still learning that take a break means that she can do what she wants. But again, if she's not going to pee or poop, Sadie, let's go. Again, say there was someone at the corner with a dog and you know your dog is reactive, this is what you want to practice over and over and over and over and over again. Say the Good girl! Yes, good girl! Can I get a sit? Yes! Yes! You want to rehearse, you want to practice that over and over again because for the most part, a lot of people, when they have a reactive dog and they see a dog coming, they've already sent a signal to their dog that, uh-oh, something's getting ready to get, you know, happen. A lot of people wrap the, the leash around their hands in preparation, and the dog feels that. The, the dogs pick that up. So that's one of the things that you know, a lot of people do inadvertently that they don't know that they're doing, causing the more leash reactivity. Sadie Bug, come. Good girl. Hey, Sadie. Sadie, hey, hey. See, she's got a set going. Sadie, sit. Nope. Come on, sit. Very awkward trying to do this holding the camera. But I want her, I want to get her attention and know that every time I call her name and, and do that, instead of, you know, reacting in fear of what the, you know, the, the reaction level is going to be with the dog coming, so you just want to rehearse this so you know what your dog is going to do. If you know the dog is doing it because you practice it over and over and over again, you're going to feel better because you you see something different instead of the reacting. Say the cup. Say the cup. Good girl. So this will be added into her walk every single time she's out. Say the cup. Good girl. Yes. Yes. So if I see a dog walking, so right now I know there's a dog coming up behind me. I don't, she's probably going to go the other direction when she sees a Rottweiler. But you know, when I know that that dog is going to be seen by Sadie, this is what I want to do. You know, I might even jackpot her for the first few times just to get her attention. Take a break. Do it again. Come here, dog. Good girl. Sit. Sit. Now that one was a little ex expect. She expected it on that one. Good girl. Yes. No jumping around. See that little, you know, uh, guy's color with his pit bull zoomies. Uh, she has a, a Roddy zoomie. Call it what you want. Sadie, come. Good girl. Yes. And now I'm going to start marking that behavior. When she sits, I'm going to say yes and give her a treat. Again, treat being dog food, kibble, not treats. And I'm going to keep this under five minutes. But this is just demonstrating what you should be doing for power conditioning a dog that is reactive when it sees other dogs. Say to come. Good girl. Good girl. So when you see that dog coming, you know, you want to be animated. You want to be, you know, this is a good thing. You're turning around for daddy, you're getting the for mommy, and you're getting some goodies. So this is something you want to, you know, the dog should be happy to do. It should be happy to do it. It should be rehearsed until the dog is, you know, it's second nature, muscle memory. You want to actually have the dog see another dog 
can pretty much anticipate you calling the dog, getting the dog's attention, and getting a treat. So that's it. I also like to say when your dog is in that frenzied state of mind, it's hard for them, almost impossible for, the, possible for them to make good decisions. So the key is to put out the fuse before the fireworks.